Okay, yeah, that that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, we're good. Uh huh. And please right, do cool. reintroduce yourself. All right, my name is Tay. Pronouns he him. I'm a Texan. I'm here to talk about Ted Cruz. All right, I feel like that's pretty good, right? Yep. All right. So I feel we I I feel like we both agree that the Ted Cruz LGBT tweet thing speaks very. It's an interesting reflection of how moderate Republicans feel about the uh, like anti woke agenda. We both agree on that, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and I feel I feel like we would also agree that it's you know right message, wrong person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not necessarily wrong person, but you know. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like odd uh, person to see it coming from. Yeah, odd right message, odd person. Uh, so, Big Ted, I don't think in my years of living in Texas, I'm for like reference, I'm 19. I've lived in Texas for about for the great majority of my life, maybe about 13 years. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever met a single Texan who likes him, Republican or Democrat interesting and I, for some reason some somebody's got to vote him in you know yeah I, but it, it feels like every single person who i have heard speak politically like whether that be like relatives or just people who i know and people who are my age people who are older than me etc no matter their political leanings they hate ted cruz and this i feel like a a lot of the people on the on the left hate him for his policy obviously because he's a republican duh but then there's the rights perception that he's just kind of a cuck which is also not really wrong i'll give him that he is kind of a he is kind of like a a kisser upper i guess like he went to the mike pence school of thought you know yeah um but I, f- I feel like, so I live, I live southeast of Houston, which, which uh, suburbs of Houston are generally purple-ish. But I, again, I've never heard anybody come in defense of them, and I think it's because of moves like that. Weirdly enough, we're moves that are like popular outside of like weirdo like internet spheres. I feel like it's because of stuff like that that nobody's been like outwardly defensive of him Mm -hmm. and oh man i'm trying to figure out like the the correct words but nobody's really been like ted cruz that's my guy i will vote for him no matter what but uh fuck okay hold on i'm i'm stumbling a bit here i'm repeating myself it's all good cool thanks Mm -hmm. but nobody's been the guy in my life, in my lived experience, to be like Ted Cruz, fucking love that guy, and I think it's because he refuses, either out of sheer spite or just kind of stupidity or hardheadedness, good old Texan independence, to uh, I feel like he just refuses to toe party lines unless he directly sees. Oh, a uh, a way for him to climb up by towing those party lines. Like, I, I know he does it policy-wise, but it feels like when it comes to more social matters, he refuses to tow the party line, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's kind of a situation where... I mean, I guess it's that kind of meme where it's like fiscally conservative, socially like... Well, even then, he's not necessarily socially liberal. He's just, like, socially... Normal? Yeah. It's like, he's, like, the average conservative that, I guess you could say. Like, he says some dumb shit occasionally, but overall, it's like... Eh, you know? Like, I, I, is it, like, an is-what-it-is situation? Because, like, keep in mind, the way that, um... You know, I'm from North Carolina. And the way that I view Ted Cruz as someone from North Carolina. Ted Cruz is, of course, one of the more famous senators in the United Mm -hmm. States. And to me, at least, he's always been kind of almost like the cucked, um, like the cucked senator. Like, the guy who 
um, in all of his, in all of his things, like, you can very tell that he doesn't actually believe, well, no, he does believe in a lot of the things that he pushes, but a lot of the time it's just so that he can, like, get elected and shit. And yep. I find this, this fact to be, you know, kind of interesting to look at, especially when I did see the tweet from Ted Cruz that was, like, shockingly pro-gay in terms of the um, Uganda stuff. Um, it was one of those situations where it was like, okay, I know he isn't doing this because of, like, well, he probably isn't doing this because of some personal, sincerely held belief. He's likely doing this because he feels like it is electorally viable for him to act in a manner that would be considered pro-gay because of, you know, whatever reason. Um, whether that be, like, Texas becoming more blue over time and he feels like he is in a position where he needs to start becoming more progressive lest he gets voted out of office or, like, things of that nature. So, like, I mean, I guess generally, like, you know, what's your take on this as, like, a, a Texan, a proud Texan citizen from the yes, sir. good state of Texas? Um, I, th I think we have a very similar outlook on him, but as, as some, okay, so can I get the middle, sorry, I'm so sorry, can I get the middle part again? Like, mm-hmm. Okay, like after the cuck part. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, I feel like Ted Cruz is someone who was very often like politically motivated just by things that, um, like he is a politician in the purest sense possible. He does things that okay. he knows will get him elected. He tries to be as electorally safe as humanly possible. Um, and he is willing to even move on views that may not be as popular in the Republican Party, such as pro queer views. Um, in order to maintain his um, station, at least as a senator um, from Texas, yeah. just because okay, of like, I got you now. yeah, like he's he's a very politically ambitious person. We see this even like with him trying to run for president previously. Yeah, sorry about that. I got a little distracted. That's why I'm muted for a bit. But um, mm -hmm. I've seen Ted Cruz in the same breath be the most unelectable like uncaring piece of trash ever <laughs> when he you know abandoned us when we were dying yeah the flight our, to our third word power grid <laughs> the flight to cancun <laughs> yeah but i've also it, it's so weird because he i feel like he he does the things that he does again to be electable but to be i think he does it more to be liked if that makes sense, not necessarily electable, but to be like liked by normal people. And I think just everybody in the United States, besides like the corporations that donate to him, just see right through it. You you agree with me there? Yeah. Yeah. Ted Cruz, I mean, like I said earlier, he's one of the easiest politicians to read as oh, a yeah. politician. But um with even though okay i'm about to fl i'm about to play ted play uh play on ted's side for a bit mm -hmm. i'm terribly sorry i have to do this oh lord even though he is a, an ass kisser i think that <laughs> i think that there is nobody that is more perfect at representing texas than a strong-willed hard-headed cuck fair yeah you need a you need a good hank hill well no hank hill isn't a cuck hank yeah. hill's a king yeah H hank hill is like a, a true libertarian indeed he's he's actually a king he's the king of the hill mm -hmm. <laughs> um but that joke aside i i do wonder like why you do have that perspective about texas because again i'm a fucking outsider i'm a i'm a filthy north carolinian aka the best state in the south um which isn't saying a lot but i i do wonder why you do have that perspective because like looking at texas politically it is a very weird state in terms of like mm -hmm. where it's moving um in terms of like you know 
its political leanings, Texas is becoming more purple over time, while at the same time you'll have a demonic state government, unfortunately. It's, well, it's it, it interesting. Got a, it got a good bit better. It got a good bit better recently. Uh, so I don't know if this it is if this is how it is in uh, North Carolina, but here in Texas, the lieutenant governor is very powerful. He like he is the guy who ultimately has the say. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mr. Wheelchair Man is is a uh, his name escapes me, but uh, wait, about. fuck. Uh, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about, the governor. Yeah, Wheelchair Man. He's even though he does have the power, he does have a vast amount of power over the state government. Ken Paxton, our former lieutenant governor, thank God, mm-hmm. it is ultimately the guy who is that he's he kind of pulls the strings in the Texas government. It, would that? Yeah, I don't know if that's how it works in other states, but wait, I thought we're kind of uniquely fucked. I thought Paxton was the uh, attorney general. He's uh, what's he is the uh, let me see. I'm pretty sure he's lieutenant governor. I I do, do know a... that he got like impeached recently because fucking he pissed off uh, Dan the Patrick. I'm so sorry, Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick. Okay. Okay, Dan Patrick, Lieutenant Governor of Texas. It, it it's a very uniquely powerful spot for Lieutenant Governor, where he is ultimately able to pull the strings. My point still stands. It's just kind of different names. It um, happens. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's how it is in other states, but that's how it is here. Uh, would you say that it's anything like that? over there in north carolina in north carolina it's not like that at all um our governor and lieutenant governor are elected in entirely two different races so currently right now are so weird to me yeah so our governor we we do two different races too but it's they're very strongly related but yeah for ours it's like i think they happen during like different election years too um, which is, you know, kind of fucking ensuring that the lieutenant governor is the controller of, like, the state senate, and, um, mm. uh, it, it kind of benefits the Republican Party in the state with the lieutenant governor being, like, controller of the state senate and shit. Um, it, it's some bullshit. But we have a situation currently in North Carolina where we have a fucking basically blue dog democrat as our governor and uh roy cooper and then in our uh, lieutenant governor mark robinson we have uh quite literally fucking satan spawn as Ooh. as our lieutenant um governor he's he's really fucking bad and he now wants to run for governor of our state and i hope something very not i i hope he trips i hope he trips and falls down a very long flight of stairs i'll put it like that um anyways back to back to teddy um i feel like i've sort of watched as as i've grown more politically aware just for reference i used to be sort of center center right somewhere in there kind of like a quote-unquote reasonable republican kind of guy and as like i saw more and more i just moved to the left more and more because i realized like huh these people are saying the correct things and these other people aren't but um the whole time no matter where i was i hated ted cruz and again this filters back to him not want either not wanting or not being willing to um just blindly toe the party lines and i i think personally from from inside both my heart (laughs) Hope, I, I hope this from the bottom of my heart that we are about to see the downfall of Ted Cruz. I don't know how many things he can do without it ultimately just toppling over. I don't know how many just dumb things he can do. How how many like decent, you know, decenter things not necessarily decent but decenter um mm-hmm. i don't know how many things he can do period at this point to save his reputation i and i feel that he will not be replaced by a democrat but he'll be replaced by a worse a, republican well, yeah 
not necessarily a Trump puppet because that's what he is, but maybe like a sort of like Neo DeSantis. Yeah. I feel like that's a on the verge. Uh, we're gonna get a more. We're not. No, we're gonna get a less ambitious but more evil guy to replace him. Which would really suck, cause yeah, it's gonna be great for us. Yeah. Well, fuck. I mean, he's a he's a natural he's a nationally represented politician too. So Ted Cruz yeah, I think, uh, gets go replaced by a demon, then you know. Who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah, it's like a it's like a demon getting replaced by Satan himself. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun to watch. Yeah, but um, I feel like this is started right now when we see because Ted Cruz isn't running. Thank God. Hopefully, he keeps uh Actually, no. I would like to see Ted Cruz get destroyed by Trump again. Never mind. I I hope he um reconsiders and goes into the ballot so Trump can call him a cuck again. Uh, but I, that's just my uh, hope. But I feel like we're starting to see this with him not running for president. Mm -hmm. He, I think he, he not necessarily realizes that he's not a viable candidate, but he I think he feels that he his time is either up or not here yet. He, I think the Republican Party has gone past the need for him, and he's hoping for them to swing back and not leave him behind. I guess is how I'm, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, because effectively Ted Cruz is a neocon. Well, whereas like the modern Republican Party has shifted more along the lines of just flat out neo-fascism. Ted Cruz is like. I would honestly say he's like slightly to the right of fucking Bush, if I'm being honest. Which, yeah. I mean, and yeah, in a position like he's in, it's not like he's in a state where he can get away with doing that. Because Texas, you know, purple state, but fucking say what you will about Texas, y'all have some strong ass fucking Republicans. Um, oh, yeah. Some very scary and strong Republicans. And. Inherent to that is the fact that, you know, you're in a state with a lot of strong Republicans. Texas, beside, like, next to Florida, Texas has been on the forefront for a lot of the more rough legislation in terms of uh, queer people, um, you know, other things of that nature. And with that, it's, it's going to be a situation where Ted will either have to you know, like, adapt to that, join in with that, or he's gonna get left behind. And he's already kind of indicated through what he did here that he believes that the tide is kind of gonna turn towards, like, the more pro-queer side. But then again, like, we can never really know. Um, because, I mean, ultimately, Ted Cruz, he's, he's, a, he's a shitty person, but he's a person. And no matter what his campaign teams suggest that he does, he's going to have to signal one way or another. And it almost feels like he's putting his chips in, like, pro-queer politics because he thinks that that's going to help win in, like, his seat back in 2022 when he's back up for re-election. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely interesting to watch where he's going to have to go with that. Because I do feel like Ted Cruz just as an individual senator is going to be a very good gauge of what like the country is going to look like going forward electorally mm -hmm. uh i think i think cruz is going to do what trump did in 2016 where he creates like a false big tent where he, you know he had the gays for trump blacks for trump asians for trump blank whatever marginalized group for trump i i think he's going to try to recreate that like the faux big tent and but the thing is I don't think Ted Cruz either has the ideological conviction or the balls to just go mask off and just be and just do the fascism that the rest of the Republican wants him to that the rest of Republicans want him to do as a very uniquely powerful senator. I think he again lacks the balls, but also I don't think 
I think he both lacks the balls and is principled at the same time, if that makes any sense. Yeah. He he doesn't toe party lines again. Um, he doesn't toe party lines, but also he will always, for better or worse, say what he not necessarily genuinely believes, but he will say what he thinks is best for him as a person in his position and not necessarily as a like a, a person who's the next step up like a president or a cabinet member or whatever he will always say what is best for him or what he feels like is best for him in the long game and i again and just like you said earlier i think that it really shows to where the the laneman the laneman republican the voter base is going yeah yeah and then another thing too which i mean this was kind of found out like a year ago but um there have been talks about ted cruz potentially having like a child who is queer um and i think i saw something about that yeah and and i guess my wonder on that regard would be like is Ted Cruz's current movement also kind of in an effort to like save face with his children? Like, is is he does he have a heart almost? You know, but um, like in in kind of like a dark fucked up way. Like, does he realize that the politics that he's pushing could potentially you know like with the way that states like florida are moving in terms of um pro queer politics especially when it comes to like parents supporting their kids or like having known queer kids and like those kids potentially being taken away from them is it a, also a situation where ted is trying to like save face with his kids like i don't know what's going to happen with that because it, it's definitely different with him when it comes to like queer politics compared to other politicians if that is true and he does have a child that is queer because that's gonna that's inevitably gonna like lead to a situation where he has to i mean almost he, like like he's put in a position where he's going to have to be um pro queer just so that he can ensure that his child is almost safe and that he can still continue to have a relationship with his kid even though he did fucking sell him out for Paul Cancun shit um but that's neither here nor there um which is also a very interesting question to bring up like how much is he willing to sacrifice in his personal life just to fuck over other people almost well I don't think this is I'm saying this in very bad faith, um, but I don't think Ted Cruz is smart enough for self-preservation. Fair. Um, <laughs> um, I think it, well, it is self-preservation. Well, not self, but you know. I, do, I think these are two things that have happened at one time and only one of them was on purpose. Um, I think he's playing the LGBT card not necessarily as preservation for his kids or his kid not kids or maybe kids we, we don't know um i think he's playing it as not as self preservation for his kid but as a popularity move i and i know it's it's a uh, incredible it makes me come off as, as thinking of him as incredibly evil but i do think of him as incredibly evil so that I mean, Checks he is. Out. Fuck him. Yeah. But, I, again, I don't think he's smart enough for self-preservation. I think these are just two things that have happened at the same time, and it comes off as self-preservation. Because if he was smart enough to do sort of, like, damage control and have any sort of grip over his image, he would... He would have had the media shut up about Cancun, and he just couldn't do that. Yeah. Which, again, that also kind of comes into the question of, like, is that also because Ted Cruz is, like, a good politician, or is he just, like, kind of incompetent? Which, to me, he's always kind of came off as, like, a bit of a fucking incompetent. Which, that's bias. You know, I'll be 100% honest. That's bias. I don't fucking like the guy. 
Um, but the media has always kind of never been on his side, too. So, I don't know. That one's a complex question, being honest. Yeah, and I feel like even if you were to ask Ted, you, you still wouldn't get the answer to it. Yeah, probably not. But, um, I think... Okay. So, Ted Cruz is incredibly stupid, but I do think he is a good politician. Good politician meaning that he is an effective politician, not necessarily that he's doing good things. Fair. I think he's an effective politician, and therefore good at his job. Because... Dis- I I can respect the hustle of being so incredibly hated by every single person in every single party and still getting elected. He has to be a damn good politician to be able to do that. That is true. That is true. I do wonder how he can still pull that shit the fuck off because like no one likes him. <laughs> it might just be nobody's running against him. Yeah. I mean, wasn't the last person they fucking played against Ted Cruz fucking Beto O'Rourke? Like, who, who's running Beto in fucking Texas, dude? Really? <laughs> Again? <laughs> like that guy? Fucking Beto? I think, like, from a Texan perspective, Beto is decent. He's he's kind of like, he's played up over here as like a savior, which he isn't. I think he doesn't believe some of the things he says. Stuff like that, but that's typical politician stuff. Um, Beto over here, if you if you if you were to to insult Beto to a blue person over here, like let's say you go to Harris County or Houston, um, and you were to like bad enough Beto, you would probably get like weird looks, like weird angry looks. Okay. So he's he's kind of yeah. Good. Oh no, you go ahead. He's again he's kinda like he's kinda been viewed as like a martyr here for some weird reason or the other. Interesting. Okay. Cause like I've I've heard Beto kinda be compared to like Obama, which I, I don't see the I don't see the comparison. Yeah. Point. I think I think the comparisons end and begin at their charismatic speakers and that's really where that's all yeah i mean and ultimately that's like kind of nothing and even then like i've i've seen beto speak he's he's not a politician for the modern day (laughs) is the way i I think i think beto has a has a power to to touch the people who already agree with him yeah about like the vast majority of things i think he has the the uh the charisma to make people who already agree with him agree with him louder but i don't think he's he's not obama to where he's like he is so charismatic and good at speaking that he is still affecting political speaking right now and you know we have his vice president as our current president right now um He's not Obama charismatic, and I think any Texan who says that is either ha- hasn't seen him speak or is just very looking at him with rose tinted glasses. Yeah, which I mean, I guess it makes sense, but when when you're stuck in a state with fucking Greg Abbotts and fucking Ken Paxton's and your house speaker showing up to the fucking house floor drunk, I guess I guess you would come to. No, you. He, I'm. I'm sorry. He was a king for that. He, he kind of was. He kind of was. If I had to work, if I had to work there, I'd come into work every. If I had to work there, I would come into work drunk every day. So I can't fault him for that one. Yeah. I mean, honestly, my only thing about it is like, as long as he didn't drive, I kind of don't give a fuck. It was very funny. So you, you cut out of it. Oh, uh, I just said like, you know, as long as he didn't drive to work, I kind of don't give a fuck. It was very funny. Um, I feel. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of Texans that would uh, disagree with you on that one. I, we're, I don't know if you know this, but we're very, we're very bad drivers over here. Oh, I've heard. 
Yeah, uh, especially Houston. I don't know if, what it's like in Dallas, but uh, if you're go if the speed limit says 65, and you're not pushing like 75 in the right lane, you're you're going too slow. Like uh, our our driving schools, they don't even teach us to follow the speed limit. They teach us to go median speed because it's safer. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's great over here. Well, I guess that's what happens when your fucking state is so fucking large. People just stop giving a fuck. Like, I've heard fucking between... I, I forget which cities it was. I think it was, like, Dallas and Austin. It's, like, a fucking four-hour drive. And it's, like, really? <laughs> yeah, I can, I, can, I can fact check that real quick. Please do. I'm, I'm, I'm currently Dallas, playing Portal. Dallas to Austin drive. So it is a three hour drive. God um, damn. Let me see. But uh let me see I think you might be thinking of Dallas to San Antonio, because that's closer to four hours. Okay. But um you know, any city within the triangle takes about three and a half or so hours to get to the other one. Which is why <coughs> Like in my state, oh. it's fucking it's not that bad. For those of you, sorry, for those of you who don't know in the chat, or maybe you, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that in a patronizing way. But You're uh, fine. for those of you who don't know, uh, the triangle refers to uh, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, that's all I want to say. Sorry. Mm. Mhm. Mm yeah. I mean, it's a fucking big-ass state. But then again, that also kind of informs Texas's politics, you know? Like, the size of the state is gonna definitely have an effect on, like, the politics that occur, that occur there, because, oh, sure. like, less people are gonna be spread out there. But at the same time, Texas is such a, I guess you could say, like, state value in terms of, like, land size that it, you're gonna have situations where cities are going to develop and in those cities it is going to be like more more progressive like in i think harris county is one of the more progressive counties in the united states mm. in general in texas um it, like in texas but also in the united states in general and um the only reason why you really get that is because of you know just how many big ass fucking cities are in texas so mm. It's definitely an interesting situation, and I wouldn't be shocked. And again, I said it earlier, like, it looks like Ted Cruz is kind of playing his chips this way, but I wouldn't be shocked if, I wouldn't be shocked if Texas became, like, more progressive over time, which it already seems to be, but, like, if Texas it's became a blue state that. soon, I wouldn't be shocked. I don't think soon. I don't think it'll be one soon. I think it'll be a battleground state very soon, though. But I don't think it'll be, like, well, California is a bad example because that's, like, the bluest blue state. But I don't think it'll be, like, a... What's a, what's a like, purplish blue state? Like, Arizona? Yeah. I, I don't think it'll be Arizona anytime soon. But I do think it is a battleground... It is an emerging battleground state. And I think that uh, if, if you're a Democrat running for president right now i think you could ignore it but come 10 years i think any any democrat worth their salt would be pumping money into texas yeah which has definitely been like an interesting thing to because like whenever you think of and this almost goes into like the concept of like stronghold states you know what states mm -hmm. is a party guaranteed to win because like the only reason why, you know, like, not the only reason, but the biggest reason why Democrats are so electorally viable is because they have the stronghold states of, like, California and um, New York. Like, states with, I believe they have the two highest electoral vote numbers. Um, I know California has the highest, but, like, these states with the two highest electoral vote numbers, and they wouldn't be the Democratic Party wouldn't be where they were if it wasn't for their stronghold states of, you know, California and Texas. And I think, not Texas, and New York. And I think what we see with... Someday, hope. Someday. Someday, indeed. Um, and I think what we do see with um, 
the Republican Party is that their stronghold state is Texas. Because, like, until very recently, Florida was a purple state, and then DeSantis gets mm. into office, and then that's kind of up in the air now. I'd say, I'll definitely say Florida is, like, much more of a uh, red state now than it was a purple state. But at the same time, you also have situations where, um, you know, with Texas potentially becoming a purple state, the Republican Party might be down, like, a whole nother, um, like, red state. And that's very dangerous, and I think that's very scary to them as a oh, party. I think if Texas goes blue, I think the Republican Party, in its current form, is, is, it is done. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, if you lose Texas, you clearly... You're, you've clearly done you're something wrong. You're not winning shit. <laughs> yeah. And especially, like, if you lose Texas, you know, it becomes a situation where the Democrats can win three massive electoral states, whereas the Republicans, if they do officially gain Florida, they're only winning one. Like, guaranteed. And even then... If that was only a purple state up until very recently, they aren't even guaranteed to win that one. So that's that's definitely going to be an interesting development to watch. But, I mean, I guess as always, Texas, the most American state, all eyes are going to have to be on Texas to see where things go. Just like all eyes are going to be on Ted Cruz just to see where, you know, kind of our electoral politics may travel to in terms of a where conservative politicians are going to have to start leaning in order to get elected. Hmm. I, but I, I don't think Ted Cruz is a good, like, uh, what is it called? Gauge. Um, like a point of observation, you know? Mm -hmm. Good gauge, yeah. That's, uh, I don't think Ted Cruz is necessarily a good gauge for where Republican electoral politics can go. I think how it, I I do think he is a good reflection of the Republican people, um, but I don't necessarily believe that this carries on to where the Republican Party goes from here, because they've already left him in the dust. They they clearly don't need him anymore, and I feel like I I think that's part of why he's not running this year. It's because he acknowledges and he knows that the Republican Party doesn't need him. Um, and I think he's either going to be, he's either going to be like a, like the polar opposite of Bernie to where he runs as independent, but, uh, whenever he does a bigger election runs as a Republican in like for a base of power, I think he's going to be the polar opposite of that. And I do think if he does the independent route, there is a chance that he can keep his spot in office even though that sounds weird because he would be losing a base of power but uh i feel like he would i think he would gain respect or he would be viewed as even more of a cook yeah I, I, it's a very gamble it's a very big gamble he would either gain respect and people would say that he has like really big balls for uh having the will to run against republicans in texas and respect him for that and therefore vote for him or they're going to be like, oh, the Republican Party left you behind and you're salty. Yeah. Which, honestly, that also depends on how Ted Cruz can personally, I, I guess, shift it. But then again, considering Cruz as a person, I don't know if he is strong enough to pull off the fucking... Like, Ted Cruz is not fucking... You'd have to be some form of, like, stoic to be able to successfully pull that off. And Ted Cruz just is not that. It's, it's Ted fucking Cruz. Like, like what is fucking Raphael gonna do? Let's be honest. God damn it, I died. <laughs> like, um... I, I think... Like, I don't know how it is in other places, but we have a, we have a way of gauging politicians here. It's, a. Uh, it, I'm pretty sure it's like this other places. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you you think you don't necessarily think about their policy, but you think, would I have a beer with this person? Fair. And Ted Cruz is a hard no, but like you give me you give me George W. Bush, hell yeah, I'm having a beer with George W. Bush. Well, yeah. He's funny as fuck. Unintentional, but, uh, but yeah, but uh, you give me 
I, I think George W. Bush, evil as he may be, which he is an evil man, um, is a man of character. And I think he is a principled person. He is principally evil. And I, I think uh, Ted Cruz, however, is... The, well, this gauge is great because they're both from Texas. But uh, Ted well, Cruz, actually, however... Sorry to burst your bubble. Uh, George Bush is oh, actually I, from no, fucking Massachusetts. No. Wait, wait. Uh, am I thinking of H. W. Bush? Uh, both Bushes are from Massachusetts. No. Yep, they're both oh, fucking Northerners. Oh my god. Oh. Fuck. Yep, H. W. Bush is from Milton, Massachusetts, and uh, W. Bush Bastard. is from let's see, New Haven, so Connecticut. <laughs> Those pitches at the Astros games meant nothing to them? Oh, yeah, no. No, it was actually their electoral oh, strategy God. to be more, like, viable in the fucking South. They acted like they were Southerners. Wow. Yep. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, <laughs> my point still stands that, George, that uh, George W. Bush, liar and evil as he may be, is a man, is a man of... Uh, character and is a would be a fun guy politically aside to have a beer with ted cruz however i i just don't get that vibe i think uh he i think if if uh ted, if you got ted cruz drunk he would either be he would either cry in a corner because he has like an epiphany over how much of a cuck he is or he would um, just, just kind of, I don't want to say expose himself because that sounds kind of sexual, but, uh, he would, he would, you know, he would he reveal some himself. secrets he isn't supposed to reveal. Yeah. yeah. It's going to like reveal that the, uh, the Texas Republican party has fucking cocaine orgies, just like Madison Cawthorn well, did. I, I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Yeah, no. I mean, well, Madison Cawthorn, let me tell you the plight. This is the man from the North Carolina's 11th Congressional District, Madison Cawthorn. Uh, very young Republican politician. God fucking damn it, I died. Um, very young Republican politician. Um, I think he was about 25 years old. Uh, like, very young. Like, one of the youngest members of Congress. And he revealed that... Well, he said that the Republican Party was actually really fucking immoral and that he was invited to, like, gay cocaine field fucking orgies. Um, and due to that, he was the politician who had, like, those pictures that came out of him, like, cross-dressing and shit. And, uh... Madison Cawthorn reveals sky is blue. Yeah. Um, basically, he got fucking primaried and he's, like, no longer in a government anymore because he's fucking... Revealed that the Republican Party was having like a gay cocaine field, um, fucking orgies. Which, I mean, honestly, I think people should be allowed to have gay cocaine field orgies. They yeah, should just if uh, they were open about it. Yeah, like just be honest about it. That sounds sick as fuck. I would vote for a politician who went to a fucking gay cocaine field orgy. That sounds sick as fuck. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just like honesty. Honesty is the best policy. I yeah, I don't get the Republican like, uh, what's it called? Apprehension. Will. No, not necessarily apprehension, but the Republican will to take a bunch of, like, cool people and just, like, be like, oh, yeah, this is who you're voting for. Like, Joe Biden's son, fucking, he was cool as shit. He, like, did coke off of strippers' asses and he had a huge dick. Yeah. No, he, was, he was cool. Like, that makes me want to vote for Biden more because if he produced that, he must be a pretty good guy. Yeah. It's like, it's it's the philosophy of dudes rock, um, like the uh, the ever glorious lines led by donkeys podcast says, you know it's like it's, it's, it's fucking this is cool these people are sick as hell you know I want I want more politicians who get caught having gay cocaine fueled orgies that sounds great yeah if if Ted Cruz had a gay had a gay cocaine orgy or l let me step it up a uh, a gay heroin orgy because everything's bigger in texas of course um uh i feel like i would gain i would be shocked at first but whenever it came time to 
put in my ballot, I would consider it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, who knows what Ted Cruz was flying to Cancun for? What if he was actually flying to Cancun to get the, uh, to get the materials needed for the next orgy? Who knows? Making direct backroom dealings with the cartel or some shit. I mean, I, I believe it. Yeah. Maybe Ted Cruz is cooler than we think. Yeah, maybe it is just a facade to uh, prevent the uh, GOP and the Democrats from exposing him from being for being sick as fuck. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Maybe. Bryce Hopefully. F. in a chat says, Think bigger. Massive gangbang fentanyl orgy. Ooh. That sounds fun. The only question is, who's getting gangbanged? Who, who's uh, down for the, the citizens of Texas? The citizens of Texas. Oh shit! Yeah, by your fucking electric grid, dude. I'm so sorry to hear about that. By the way, it'll happen again. <laughs> sorry. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, we don't we don't fix shit here. We just let it rot. Yeah, I guess to like kind of give some insight from me. Um, my my grandfather. A he used to live in Texas when he was in the military. And B, he's also works for like a pretty major power company and he's like fairly high up and he's like he helps with electric grid shit. And when the initial like ERCOT thing happened like a couple of years ago, he fucking ranted about how fucking stupid the system is. And I I've, I've legitimately never seen him like more pissed off over something. It was insane. Um Yeah. Because the entire, like, independent... Because, A, most of your... Not most, but, like, a decent chunk of, like, the western part of the state is not, um... Attached is not even connected to the, to the grid. grid. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the independent grid, it isn't... It isn't cold resistant, which, like, Texas, I guess it makes sense why. But then it also isn't well, fucking heat resistant. <laughs> so, like... Well the, thing is, I, well, the thing is, Texas, I, I think we're... I think we're uh, discounted for how climatically diverse we are. Um, you can go up to Amarillo, which is a, it's a state, or it's pretty much parallel, not a state, it's a city, it's pretty much parallel to Oklahoma City, but to the west. And you can go up there and it'll be snowing, and it'll be like perpetually sub-30s. But you go, I live in, uh, I said earlier I live in Houston, actually, plot twist, I live in Galveston. Um, <gasps> I'm sorry I lied, but uh, you go down to Galveston, it'll never touch below. It'll never touch below fifty unless it's like an extreme weather event, and I. It is so incredibly stupid to not have a power grid that is resistant to the climate of or the climates of Texas. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Power grids are weird. Um, I just hope fucking more things don't happen of that nature. Which, like, they're bound to happen. I just hope that, you know, I guess looking at Texas, what I hope is that people, the people of Texas are self-preserving enough to realize that like the current state government really does not give a fuck about y'all and will try to vote them out is... See, i think I, it might just be because i'm a i'm a filthy city boy but i think that is i think that's a stereotype about us that we are like incredibly like we're we're like the definition of rugged uh individualism mm -hmm. i think that is a bit of a stereotype it i don't know about west texas but southeast Texas, that it that it couldn't be further from the truth. We are very much reliant on the things that we are given by the by the city. Um, and I live in a swamp. Don't so I, I cross. I'm sorry. I cross four thousand, not four thousand, but I cross a lot of bridges every single day to get the work. Yeah. And. Um, if if a single one of those bridges goes down, I am getting fired. Oh, <laughs> and I, I, in, at least in Southeast Texas, and 
so, and for like the three people that live in East Texas, um, we are very reliant on things Either. that are given to us by the city. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I can't speak on West Texas because they are insane for living out in the desert. Yeah, but I mean, I guess people are gonna do what they are gonna do. What, what do you do as a job, by the way, from ass? Do you sell propane oh, um, and propane accessories? One day I hope to, but uh, I, well, I, I'm a, I'm a student, I'm a college student, so I just work part time. I, uh, I work at a dog groomer, and no, I don't groom the dogs, sadly. But I just oh. work up front at a dog grooming shop. All right. So you're you're turning the freaking dogs guy. I can respect it. Oh yeah. Ah oh, shit, well, shit shit I'm shit not. shit fuck fuck the fuck. Sorry, I'm playing portal right now. I just got like blasted. <laughs> Jesus. I'm not. Our groomers definitely are. I don't think there's a single one of our groomers that we have that isn't some shade of LGBT. Which isn't shocking. <laughs> Yeah, it's a. At the end of the day, it's it's, it's hairdressing, so it's yeah. gonna be a pretty gay market. Let me see. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Or... I mean, honestly, not particularly. I think this was a very good conversation. I do wonder if you had any final memes that you would like to share with the chat, though. Okay. Um, let me. Let me post my Ted Cruz manifesto. Right. Um, Wait, does does it have anything TOS in it? <laughs> no. Okay. No, no, it's completely fine. Okay. Ted Cruz is an effective politician. However, he is entirely he is entirely, and when I say entirely, I mean a hundred percent. So self, so hard headed, so self absorbed, and so ignorant to the struggles of the people that he represents or claims to represent that he repeatedly 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 goes against us goes does the exact opposite of what we tell him to do and we still fucking vote him in if anybody in chat is from texas i urge you vote i, I know i sound like a liberal right now but when it comes time to I know you, I know you're voting blue in Texas, which is like throwing a vote away. It's like littering on the street. But you still got to do it. <laughs> you still got to do it. If there the only way to vote him out, the only way to vote the imposter out is to vote. Okay, I think that's it for me today. All right. Well, hopefully All that right, uh, imposter Ted Cruz stops being sus. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, chat, you're all beautiful. Uh, all right. I, I'm going a, I'm to a go now. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. You all have right. a good night. Bye. You too. Bye. All right. That was a pretty fun conversation. I hope, uh, hope everyone enjoyed that, and I hope the viewers watching after enjoy that. If you liked that conversation, drop your favorite meme down below. You can also join the Discord server down below. That's where I, you know, do things. And you can also DM me there if you want to have a conversation along these lines. Uh, follow me on Twitter as well. Link in the description below as well. And I love you all. See you all in the next video. Peace.